Alright guys, welcome back. Now it's time to deploy a hub. And so far so good with settings up in the server phase. So what I mean here is that with Next.js you can either create a completely static hub or you can create a server rendered app. So the route we've gone through is the server part and as a result we have to deploy using a server. Okay? Alright, so with that said, we are going to be making use of our former server and yeah, I guess we get the gist. So since this is going to be a server deployed app, I would like to make use of Docker to handle this. So we can order, we can use other tools like PM2 since it's a node app. So PM2 can do this as well. However, I prefer Docker and I'll just stick with that. All right. So we need to create Docker file. All right. And here is what it looks like. So first thing first, we need to define the the, the image we are going to use and this is going to be node version 14. So I'm making use of version 14 because that's what I currently run and I think it makes sense to just have your app deployed on what you use to build it. Alright, so the next thing now is to define the, the directory for the app. So for this app, I'll create a directory. So let's run the command mkdir and let's just call this ec front end all right so that's the directory we're going to be making and after making the directory we want to set it as our work directory okay i'll just copy this so we can have work dir as the directory we just created so the next thing we want to do is to copy our packet.json file to the directory. So we can do that by saying copy, then dot packet.json to our directory. And after copying that, we want to install the, the dependencies. Okay, so to do that, we have run npm install. So this is going to install dependencies within our packet.json. And after that is done, we want to copy the rest of the files. So we can have copy again, then everything to our directory. Then once that is done, we want to install, we want to build our hub. So run npm run build. And when we are done with building, we want to have a command to execute our start operation. So we have command. Then we have the npm command, then the parameter which is starts. Right, so here is the setup for our Docker file that's quite straightforward. Okay, so in order to actually start this, we need Docker Compose file. So let's create a Docker Compose file, and this is going to be docker-compose.yml. Right, so the first thing to define here is the version, and I'll just still stick with the version theory. Then next, you need to define your service. And yeah, for the service, I'll just call it EC frontend, just like we did with our API. And from the service, we specify the build. So in this case, we need a contest for our build. So I'll specify the contest, and this will be dot slash. And also, I want to specify a Docker file, and I'll just specify the Docker file. Right. So the next thing we want to specify here is the port. So the port I'll be making use of is going to be 844 theory. And the reason why I'm making use of 844 theory, well, that's not really relevant actually. Let's stick with 3000 to 3000. I don't think the 844 theory really matters based on what, or based on the flow we're going to go. And finally, we want to link the volume here and the reason is whenever we make changes to the original file it's going to just link it here so the volume is this and that's the ec front end all right so that's all we need to have here this docker compose file is just used to start the docker file itself and yeah before we move on to the server let's test this and ensure it's working so i can have docker dash compose 
build. So you can either build or just start it up. So whichever you want to go with. So I'll start with the build first so that you can build a container. So this will take a while. So I'll pause and get back as soon as it's done. All right, welcome back. So our build is complete and now we can start the server. So that can close up and let's see if this works. All right, so it looks like the deployment was successful as it's working now. So before we, to test this, all we need is the machine's IP. So in case this is not on our server or on our machine, then we'll use the machine's IP or the server's IP. So here we can still we can still stick with the port three thousand and the local hosts. All right, so here is it. It's working. All right. So that's that's a good one. So the next thing to do now is to push this to our repo and yeah, pull it to our server. So git add all git commit. All right. So the the portion is complete, so let's go to the, the GitHub repo to get this. Okay, so here is the GitHub repo. Let's copy the code. All right, so here is the server, and I've logged in. So all I had to do was just SSH into the server, and here we are. So now here is the e-commerce code that we created earlier. And if you do LS, we should see the DB as well as the API. So now we want to add the front end to this. So we already copied the clone uh, repo. So all we need to do is add git clone, then the repo URL we copied, which is this. So the cloning is done if we clear and do ls again now we have the front end folder okay the directory so we can see the into e-commerce for front end and here we have all the files we need so we have the docker file we have the docker compose file so all we need to do here is just build the app and start it up so docker dash compose then build and once this is done we can start it up so again this might take a while so let's wait for it Right, so our build is complete. Again, let's start the server and see if it works. So let's clear this. Let's clear this first. Then we can add better compose up. Right, so we got an error, and the error is nest dot found. Right, so the complaint here is that node modules is missing. And there's the possibility is maybe the installation did not go well. So let's try and build it again. So the build is complete actually. So what I'll do is I would remove the build and start it again. And this time around, if it doesn't work, then we can do the map, the manual route. So let's check the images. So Docker image ls. Right, so here is the here is the image e-commerce front end EC. So I'll remove it and run the build again. And if it doesn't work this time around, we'll do the manual route. So Docker image RM. So just target the image ID and remove it. Alright, so we have a container making use of this image already. So again, let's start this container again to see if it's going to work. Okay, it's still not working. So let's let's list out our containers. So Docker container and ls. So well, it's not showing any of the containers. It's not showing any container associated with this actually. So let's prune the container to see if anything is free. Okay, it looks like it deleted something and I'm thinking it's probably the container that was unable to completely create itself. All right, so let's, let's go back to our image. And let's try to remove it this time around. 
So now the image is deleted. Let's clear things out. Let's rerun the build. And if this time around it didn't work, we'll go the manual route. So Docker Compose build again. Alright, so it's it went through again and it has built a project. So let's test again if it's going to work. Alright, so again it didn't work. Alright, so let's go to the manual routes and to perform the manual routes, all we need to do is have Docker Compose, then we run the name of a app, and I think that's EC front end. Then the next thing we want to do is perform npm install. Alright, so the installation is done. Let's stop the service. Alright, so the next one again is we want to build. So, a, so bear in mind that this is the manual process. Our Docker Compose file, our, our configuration are meant, is meant to set this up. However, from the look of things, that didn't work. So let's just run this manually. Right, so again, the deployment is successful. So finally, let's clear things. Let's stop the service. Or rather, let's use down. So then we stop down. Okay. So finally, we can restart the service again. So Docker Compose up. So this time around, it's working. So sometimes we might encounter this issue. It's not as if the Docker Compose or Docker file is wrong. Might be the server just misbehaving. So now this is working, and the next thing now is to go back is to go to our engine S to set things up. So we can access that by CD. ETC, engine X, sites available. And yeah, we want to edit the defaults. So nano defaults. Alright, so here is what it looks like. So for this particular configuration, for now, I will copy the server block we have here. So I'll just duplicate this. Alright. So note that this is listening to api.dev. So what I want to have here is going to be e-commerce.dev. So that's going to be our access here. E-commerce.dev. So what we could have actually done is to make this a wildcard. So we request for a wildcard SSL. However, uh, we've missed that. Maybe in future we can still do that. But for now, let's just stick with what we are doing. So roots and all that. So after doing it, we need to go back to our Cloudflare to enable this route. So we already have Cloudflare opened. So DNS. So add an A record. The, the route is going to be exactly the same thing. So it's going to be the e-commerce. We name it here. So e-commerce.dev.com and the IP is going to be the same thing so far. Alright, so I think we are familiar with this um, article already. So this is the article we use to request for ISSL certificates using less encrypt. So we get this and yeah, that's all we need to do. So we can come back here let's get out of here so save this get out let's paste this so instead of example.com we can have e-commerce dot dev dot dot com all right so our deployments our request was successful as you can see so we want every request to be redirected. So I'll select two. And yeah, that's completed. So if we check the 
the default configuration back, you should see a little bit of adjustments. All right, so looking at the e-commerce depth dot, as you can see, it's changed. So we now have the SSL file linked to it. And yeah, instead of having the location as try trials, so we want to pause it past this to our port 2000. So let's do that. Prozzy underscore pass. And that will be localhost 2000. So let's save this again and exit. So let's ensure that our engineer's configuration is working. So we can have nginx dash t right so there is a failure the test field so let's see the status so service engine f status all right so i guess it wasn't meant to be status because status is not showing us what is wrong but from the test we ran, we it's more like a comment. So it says invalid URL prefix in etc. So line twenty two. So let's check out the line twenty two. Invalid URL prefix. All right. So I think I get the leak was wrong. So this should be HTTP into yeah so this is a this is the right thing to do so let's save this and exit let's clear this let's run our test again all right so now this test is successful so let's let's reload our engine s so service engine s reload all right so that's done as well and I think with that we should have a half up and running. So e-commerce dot dev dot dot pro. Yeah, so our app is up and running. Everything is working. That's looking good. All right. So congratulations to us. We've been able to complete our e-commerce app. It's up and running, completely deployed. All right, so here is where we'll be stopping for the e-commerce project. I believe we have been able to gain one or two things, and I also believe we enjoyed the flow. So I will appreciate our comments so that we can improve on the channel, wherever you think I'm missing out, and whatever you think I should emphasize more on, let me know. Let me know in the comment below. So everything is up to date. I have updated the API repo. So that to contain the structure for the environment so that's available then the repo for this is available as well as we can see both pushed it together so thank you guys see you in whatever we are going to do next bye